Welcome everyone to Pearson Expert Talks. Expert Talks is a discussion, discussion forum conducted by Pearson to explore new and emerging trends in the world of business and technology. Today's topic of discussion is decoding the future with machine learning. Machine learning is a field of computer science that uses statistical tools to give computer systems the ability to learn without data being programmed explicitly. To know more about it, I would like to introduce today's experts, Mr. Saikar Dutt and Mr. Amit Kumar. Mr. Saikar Dutt is director at Cognizant Technology Solutions, Kolkata. He is a project management professional with over 20 years of, of experience in IT industry. He also visits IIM Kolkata as a guest lecturer. Mr. Dutt, Mr. Saikar Dutt has, is Pearson's author and has published books on areas such as software engineering and software project management. Mr. Amit Kumar has rich experience of, of over 18 years in IT industry. He has handled projects related to data analytics, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Now he is a full-time academician and is associated with Institute of Engineering and Management, Kolkata. In this session, we will be broadly discussing about artificial intelligent, intelligence and its evolution, about machine learning and its emergence, and about teaching approach and pedagogy to be used for machine learning. So I hand over to Mr. Saikar Dutt to take it ahead. Thank you, Neha. Uh, so good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome to the very pertinent session that we are conducting today on machine learning. Uh, so before we get into the uh, discussion mode, uh, I think uh, last uh, week I was reading an uh, article in Economic Times, which caught my eye. Uh, it says that uh, University of Melbourne and University of Toronto has developed a robot which can write poems. So think about the situation. Uh, till now, we have been thinking the AI can be used to do repetitive manual works or it can uh, help in increasing the productivity, those kind of things. But now if it is doing the innovative thing, like writing a poem, that's a whole new world that uh, will be open for uh, AI. Right? So that is how uh, the world is evolving today. And we need to catch up with that. Great, sir. Sir, I have a question for you. So what do you think industry and academics perceive artificial intelligence as? So are they in sync with each other or the perception is different? Okay, Neha, so I mean, that's an interesting question. I mean, and since I moved from the industry and now uh, full-time into academics, I can see uh, my peers now and my peers a couple of years back, uh, how they perceive AI and AI. So first, uh, let me come to the academicians, how they perceive AI and ML. Uh, so the way they perceive is like AI is like a superset and ML is a subset, right? So uh, other than machine learning, there are a lot of other techniques where rules are being used or heuristics are being used, such techniques are being used uh, to kind of solve problems. So that is all about AI. Uh, when we are talking about machine learning, it needs a lot of past information or past data to kind of churn out uh, insight. Okay, it can be either a predictive insight or a descriptive insight. We can come to that later on. But uh, I mean, as a whole, academicians perceive AI, ML, and the relation between the two in a more theoretical way. What all theoretical things they have under the hoods? Right. Now, when we go to machine learning. Uh, and, uh, when we go to the industry practitioners, sorry, and uh, when I talk with my colleagues in my other, other previous company, the way they perceive uh, machine learning and AI is a more, uh, I mean, practical way. How the customers bring problems to them and how they solve the, the problems using either artificial intelligence or machine learning. Okay, I'll take a quick example. Say, for example, when we talk about something of the sort of a, a fraud detection. We will come to that case study. It's a very uh, critical and uh, I mean, interesting case study. So that is something which is driven by the past data. That is where machine learning plays a big role 
in detecting frauds or predicting frauds. Okay. Uh, when we come to a more technology oriented domain, say for example, uh, software quality assurance uh, or rather testing whether the programs are performing correctly or not. That's a big field, right? It's a very important field. In that also, trying to understand what all scenarios need to be tested or verified. It's a problem which is generally solved using artificial intelligence. Just the past information or data related to the test cases or the, uh, I mean, the defects cannot solve the problem. It cannot find out the test scenarios which are needed to be run. But when we are trying to do something which is more specific and related to the past information, predicting a defect priority or predicting defects, that is something where machine learning comes into play, right? So again, as a, as a whole, uh, the way the, perceive, uh, per, I mean, the perception changes between academics and industries, uh, academics looks at it at a more, uh, I mean, theoretical way, more under the hoods, the technologies involved, and industry looks at it more in a problem-oriented way. What all practical problems are getting solved, okay? True, true. Well said, sir. <laughs> So you mentioned a very interesting case about robots doing right. creative writing. So can you throw some light on how artificial intelligence has evolved over the years? Okay, yeah. So uh, artificial intelligence as we see today is doing a lot of work for us, right? So it is more intelligent now, but let's first try to understand what we mean by intelligence and artificial intelligence. So by intelligence, we normally mean the way human interacts with the environment through speech, say vision, motion, how they manipulate the environment and most importantly, how they learn and adapt from the environment. Right? So that is what our intelligence is. If a machine is capable of doing all these things, interpret the environment, manipulate it and also learn from it and enhance its performance by learning through the environment, that's when we call it artificial intelligence. So the, we are seeing a form of artificial intelligence today, but the, it actually started way back in 1943 when uh, McClurch and Pitts, uh, they proposed a model saying that uh, artificial neural network can actually interpret any mathematical model or any logical model and break it down in terms of neural network. So that was the first proposal when the trigger of artificial intelligence started. After that, uh, again, uh, the name artificial intelligence came at around uh, 1956 uh, 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 through Dartmouth uh, conference. That was a big important milestone for why the artificial intelligence got its name. And a lot of innovations happened throughout the year. Ultimately, in 1980, Artificial intelligence started coming in picture uh, where industrial usage of artificial intelligence started. So at around 1980 and all the industry was around few million dollars. Within a decade, around 1990, that industry grew to few billion. So such a uh, uh, huge expectation from artificial intelligence and such a big usage out of it actually came out. And a lot of series of progress has happened and uh, we can uh, call out certain things like uh, uh, recently also we have seen things like our Google self-driven car or uh, the machine learning applications or artificial intelligence applications into our day-to-day -day life. So that all started uh, as well, which is a recent progress and the market is itself now a trillion dollar more or more. Okay, So that is how it is progressing. Now, uh, but still there is a, a lack of notion or understanding about what comprises artificial intelligence. Normally, uh, if you uh, talk to normal uh, people, students and uh, academics community, the feeling is that artificial intelligence is all about robotics. But it's not the case. Artificial intelligence is not about just robotics, robot hands or uh, our humanoids that are built. It is about many other things like Natural language processing. That is an important area of artificial intelligence where we see the chatbots every day. Now it's increasing. So you go to any financial site, 
any retail site like uh, uh, our uh, shopping cart sites and all if chatbot opens up it can understand your conversation it can converse back that means it is actually processing your national natural language interpreting it and giving you back the answer so behind it the ai engine is working similarly a vision system so not only just a video capture not like a camera but interpreting the vision breaking down into data and taking action out of that for a very big, a good example is google card so google self driven card is actually interpreting the data and having a ai engine which manipulates the environment according to that or another example is our lot of machine learning experience which actually pattern recognition or the huge data that we have that they are interpreting and churning out the results so all these are ai not only the robots so that we need to understand clearly so like few example i touched upon one good article i was reading about which said uh, google is trying to uh, avoid death so what they are trying to do is they are trying to reduce the aging of different human body parts and how they did it is they are breaking down the physiology of human beings into data points they said everything is data and i were breaking down into data points analyzing that and trying to slow down the aging of the human parts ultimately we can avoid that who knows so that is a good example our google self driven car so already a reality it has made some of the accidents but i think it will rectify and it will be a reality soon right or a big example that uh, recently i was uh, uh, reading about us military is actually using the ai based doctors as their first level diagnosis so think about that we have dearth of doctors so if we can use ai based doctors to diagnose our ailments fast this is a big implementation of ai and impacting our real life right so that is how ai has become so important or touching our real lives today so that's how important it is last piece is really interesting i'll come to it very soon sure. so we have a small quiz now uh, to understand it what have we learned you will get a question on your screen and you'll get 10 seconds to answer it the first question is which of these events is treated as the beginning of ai evolution first turing's learning machine proposal second artificial neurons model by mcculloch and pitts third arthur samuel checker player and fourth advent of robots moving to the next question second question is which of the below paved the way for faster progress in ai field faster computers big data advancements in machine learning and all of the above so the correct answer for first question is option b that is artificial neurons model by mcculloch and pitts and correct answer for second question is option d all of the above so sir uh, i'll just we'll just continue the discussion that uh, robots have replaced doctors in us uh, so do you think that it is humanly possible for us for humans to churn big data and then generate reports on work on such huge chunk of data generate reports or we need intervention of machine intelligence and computers to do analysis for us generate reports and which will make our lives easier and efficient and then we can do the analysis ourselves after we have the reports with us yeah it's, it's a very important I and mean, interesting perspective i mean i will answer your question but before that i will i mean take a quick quote of john mesby okay uh, what he said was very interesting he said that we are drowning in information but starved for knowledge okay what it means is we human beings we have so much of information in the form of past data okay we have oceans of them right but to come up with insight from that particular data meaningful insight which can actually translate into action that is where we have a big i mean lacks right so that is where i mean i think uh, i i would not say uh, whether machine learning or machine intelligence is going to replace 
it's it's more going to complement us it's going to help us in making insight from the huge amounts of data okay but uh, before going to there i mean how it can actually do that let's take a few steps back okay uh, just as saikat explained how ai evolved let's quickly try to understand how machine learning evolved to the ages right so the inception was pretty much at the same time but the point of inception was a little different for machine learning okay in 1950 there was a very seminal work from a very renowned computer scientist alan turing uh his seminal work or seminal paper uh, raised a big question can machines think okay i think that was the first point where somebody actually came up with this notion can really machines think can machines be intelligent okay that was probably the first point where all the uh formal i mean the research work regarding machine learning started okay then in the next few decades 50s 60s and 70s it gradually evolved lot more uh, different algorithms related to machine learning they were coming i mean they were brought about there was a big uh, i mean what should i say game changer or a big uh, uh, event which happened in 1997 okay there was a computer program which was uh, designed by ibm uh, it was named as uh, deep blue okay and we all know that chess is a mind game it is i mean only the intelligent people play chess and i mean it's a very complex board game right so the reigning world champion at that point of time was gary kasparov and ibm's deep blue program defeated gary kasparov Yes. that was a big move and uh, that was the first time probably people i mean common people took a serious attention yeah. at this evolving field of computer science right again there were a lot more other activities or a lot more adoptions which happened as as like a told right from the 80s adoption started right again another big event happened in 2016 a much more complex board game go uh, a professional go player was defeated by another program devised by google google's alpha go okay that was even more phenomenal because go is supposed to be much more complex a board game than chess right so this kind of a journey was possible because people had a trust on machine learning and it can actually a uh, complement human learning in solving complex problems right so now that we have gone through the journey let's try to uh, take the next step and try to understand uh, what does machine learning really mean we talk so much about machine learning but what does it mean so uh, the fundamental premise of machine learning is data we need all need to understand that so machine learning is based on data and data is the source of information or experience right so if we have a mine of information or experience and we use that to improve our performance in doing a particular task that is what is machine learning all it learns to use the experience the past experience to improve its performance in doing a specific task say for example if we take the chess game right the individual moves are the tasks how we give the individual moves whether it's a good move or a bad move is the performance and all the past moves by the same player or the other players that is the experience right so if as and when more and more moves get added to our past experience and that helps us in improving the taking the next move yeah. that is what machine learning helps us do right so that is all about machine learning so uh before we go to the uh, when the different uh, i mean case studies or how we apply machine learning i think there is also an important perspective to understand what are the different types of machine learning right i mean we all need to understand because we saw that it is based on the past information of the data So the first type of machine learning, which is probably the most commonly adopted type, is the supervised learning, 
where we have a set of data, okay, a set of information which has the type assigned to it. That type we call a class, okay. So, say for example, we have a set of information on different types of animals, and we know that each of that record relates to which animal, whether say it's a duck or not a duck, okay. Now, say for example, a new picture comes to me and based on the past information, I can take the decision whether it's a duck or not a duck. So it's like pretty much like in our childhood days, our parents used to teach us that, yeah. see, this is your hand, this is your eye, this is your pencil, this is your rubber. So we used to learn from their experience, right? And then when they asked us, tell me what is this? We say, okay, this is a hand. Right, so that is supervised learning. We are learning under the super machine is learning under the supervision of the past data, which is having a class level. Okay, next type of learning is where we have data, input data, but we don't have the type known or the class level value known. Okay, that is called unsupervised. Say, for example, again, our parents taught us the different colors yellow, uh, blue, red. They also taught us the different shapes, circular, rectangular, triangular, and all those shapes. And then they gave us some blocks, told us to group them, right? Inevitably, we would group them either by the color, all greens together, all reds together, or by the shape, all triangles together, all circles together, right? So that is called unsupervised one, okay? So, I mean, again, uh, from a practical perspective, if we think, okay, uh, say, for example, when we are talking about, say, we have a lot of males coming in there in the audience, and we have certain uh, algorithms applied to kind of based on the past males, whether they are spam or non spam, we segregate them. So, here we have a clear information about what type of male it is, and based Very on that, important application uh, exactly. Yeah. So, spam detection yeah. it's a clear example of supervised learning, right? Like that. Uh, tumor malignancy detection for cancer, right? That is also a supervised learning. But say, for example, when we are trying to cluster a segment of customers together based on either the age or the ethnicity or something. So that is clustering. That is a part of unsupervised learning. Okay. Then uh, based on the transactions that we generally do in the market, uh, we try to group their transactions or the group, the activities brought in the same transactions together. That is known as association mining. And the broader area is known as market basket analysis. That's a part of unsupervised learning. So primarily supervised and unsupervised are the ones. And we also have a third learning called reinforcement learning. But uh, for this discussion, I think we should stay at the level of supervised and unsupervised learning. Okay. So I think that gives a brief yes. context about the machine learning. Yes, yes, yes. Correct, Gan. Let's do a quick quiz to see what what uh, people have understood. So here comes the question. First question is: Which of these below is an example of supervised learning? Market basket analysis, clustering of support tickets, spam filter based on already identified spams, and bank interest calculation. So five seconds to answer and we move to the next question. Okay, the second question is what type of learning to be used when there is no idea about the class or label of a particular data? That first option, supervised learning algorithm unsupervised learning algorithm, semi-supervised learning algorithm, and reinforced reinforcement learning algorithm. So we go to the answers. Answer of first question is option C, that is spam filter based on already identified spams. And the answer of second question is option B, that is unsupervised learning algorithm. 
so sir we have uh, understood the theoretical concepts of machine learning so can you throw some light on real life applications of machine learning actually uh, maybe i mean there are few examples that we can talk about there are many examples but i will try to restrict myself to a couple of very strong adoptions of machine learning uh, first and foremost i think i touched upon is the fraud detection okay let me let me take a very practical example which i myself experienced a couple of years back i was making a high value jewelry purchase using my credit card okay and generally i don't make that kind of a purchase uh, using my card within a minute i got a call from the customer service okay and they tried to verify whether the transaction was actually made by me or not okay just try to i mean try to see i mean so many transactions happens every minute so many people from different part of the world they make transactions and that transaction to take a call whether the transaction is a fraudulent transaction i mean being just high value is not the only sure. thing it can also it also has to keep in mind if i am a kind of a customer who yes. generally makes purchases of that higher value and that kind of a commodity so all your past data needs to be analyzed exactly so all my past data and all the current transactions need to be analyzed in real time right so that is something which is not possible by a human right for that we definitely do need machine learning algorithm okay so the first level of identification and flagging the transactions as potentially fraud transactions or but that was one you may say that probably the high value of the transaction triggered the alarm right let me tell you another example this is from one of my colleagues uh, he visited to us and he was in us for uh, a substantial amount of time he came back to india his us bank account was live uh after a few years he came back and uh he was on a business visa okay he came back on business visa but his account was having funds so he used a debit card transaction to make some normal i mean grocery type of transactions okay very normal value transactions within three four transactions his card got blocked okay so now again here high value is not going to raise the flag this is normal value transaction so how did the i mean how did the alert been raised for that the past information of the trans, i mean customer was again looked at that the customer was not an active trans, i mean making any active transactions for the past few years and suddenly in a span of few hours when well, was making frequent transactions so it might be a candidate of fraud transaction so again using the past customer profile to raise a flag that it is a potential fraud transaction so let me tell you at this moment in the financial services industry machine learning is widely adopted for this particular critical business case okay so this is one of them next let me tell you uh, about a small uh, i mean say story okay you are having a political gathering okay and there are so many thousands of people in that gathering there is a very popular leader going to address the i mean mass right for the upcoming elections now there is a, a tip which comes to the local police that there is a probability that there is there might be some terrorism activities which might happen okay some chaos which is going to happen in that crowd by one or more criminals okay what they have with them are two things they have the criminal database where they have all the criminal i mean uh, i mean the uh, with the past criminal records where they have the images and they also have the feed from the cameras which are coming from the gallery okay. now tell me even if we have that is it humanly possible to check each and every image and see whether that image or that person is there in the crowd no. it's impossible okay. right it's not possible by any human being more so before because of fact that the person may be in complete right. guise i mean that may not be i mean his real face itself yeah. right True. so how can a human do this kind of detection right so for this kind of cases you definitely need to leverage machine learning at least to complement 
I mean, the human learning or the human knowledge, right? Uh, there, you can talk about many other use cases or business cases, but I mean, let me restrict to this example. Mm -hmm. So I feel that machine learning is like a magic wand which can solve all the problems. <laughs> or is there anything which is beyond the scope of machine learning? Yeah, I mean, uh, if not beyond, uh, the better way to put it is uh, not all problems should be, I mean, solved using machine learning. There are certain problems which are like uh, very trivial, uh, normal problems. Say, for example, bank interest calculation. It's completely driven by certain formulas, right? You don't need to have any kind of a past information based prediction or something, right? So you don't need any machine learning in this case. Right? Also, for example, uh, we have all the Walmarts of the world, right? They stock huge inventory, right? And they need to uh, have certain softwares to I mean, upkeep their inventory. So inventory management, again, doesn't need any machine learning. It's simple stock keeping, right? You have to have the stocks and you have to have a uh, measure of the outgoing stocks and the income stocks. But where machine learning can probably complement this, where you want to focus the demand. Yes. Say in an upcoming season, you have a holiday yes. season or a festive season. You want to predict the demand in that season. Based on the so past that, data. Exactly, based so, on the past data. Cut, cut. So that you can maintain higher levels of a particular stock, say a particular apparel brand. Yes. You can, I mean, make, maintain higher level of stock, right? So there it can complement. Again, if we come to a very typical uh, case study, like all of us open bank accounts, right? And customer onboarding is a very common, usual thing that all the banks, all credit cards, all loans, I mean, institutes, they have to give, right? Customer onboarding is a very, uh, I mean, uh, workflow driven process, like certain uh, documents to be taken, certain documents to be verified, and things like that. Certain approvals to be done by different levels of people. For that, you don't need, I mean, a normal business process modeling kind of a software can do it. You don't need machine learning. Okay. But again, if you want to gauge the risk level of a particular customer, you want to profile a customer how much risky that customer is, based on different parameters, age, ethnicity, okay, uh, what kind of financial background he or she belongs, all those things. So then you might need a risk prediction module of machine, using machine learning, which can complement the customer. Okay, so to answer your question, machine learning does not solve or should not be used to solve all problems. We should be very careful where to use it. If we use it in the wrong place, it might be counterproductive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sir, I have a question for you. It's yeah. an interesting question and it has been asked by one of our uh, participants also. Okay. okay. So, uh, why do you think that students should give more importance to machine learning? And what are okay. the career opportunities uh, after studying, after taking a course on machine learning? Well, uh, very good question and uh, very pertinent for today's session, I think. Uh, yeah, so uh, there are many uh, reasons why machine learning has been so important today and students can have a bright future out of it. One trigger is, if you uh, remember, Nascom has already declared that uh, India should be out of that uh, first three countries uh, investing into the data analytics. So that means they investment uh, on data analytics machine learning those areas to build the knowledge so that is already uh, there from the government from the is already funded then uh, uh, there are industries which are already imbibing data machine learning in a large way so i mean give you of the examples right let me give certain examples in many of the industries like uh, it's not only about the software industry or uh, the uh, banking industry that we talked about, but in manufacturing, retail, medicine, or healthcare, everywhere machine learning is making a uh, uh, point of view or machine learning is making a uh, big impact. For example, in uh, manufacturing, IoT, big data, connecting all of them and bringing up self-healing machine. That is a new term today. So machine need not be uh, corrected by the manual interventions, they will be self-healing. 
so that is the new uh, model in manufacturing that needs machine learning or in retail uh, things like sales channel improvement through customer behavior pattern analysis or the bringing of the push sales through market analysis so those are the big areas like we see a lot of push uh, uh, calls or mails right all are because of the machine learning algorithms that are getting generated banking we already talked about fraud detection or recently npa is a big thing so bad loan detection before you give the loans how we predict that whether it's a bad loan or not that's a big topic for machine learning as well healthcare we talked about medicine diagnosis uh, all these are already in place in services industry like customer service care are actually getting away with the manual intervention instead clustering the tickets that service requests they are doing which is machine learning and then responding to the customers uh, automatically that is a big ticket item so uh, there is a lot of potential in industries in uh, internship as well as well as we can see the people having the machine learning experiences are drawing salaries which are double than their, their peers so that is reality so that is how the students should be looking at it it's a big opportunity in the industry mm -hmm. so we students need to be industry ready is the what yeah the students office. should be industry ready so i think that's where we need to do some work yeah. so, so students from our like participation they want to know that what uh, what internship opportunities are there in the industry or what short term projects they can do in the final years of engineering okay. so that they can you know enhance their skill set and cv so when they go for okay. so all the big multinationals they already offer the internship in terms of uh, data analytics big data data science machine learning so those internship projects are already there only thing they need to be aware of the machine learning algorithms machine learning basic principles and machine learning programs so there are big contests that are happening by uh, all the multinational like tcs cts infosys they are holding a pan india based uh, uh, ml coding contest if students qualify on that they get the internship and which can in turn get into the job offer so there are big things that are happening so only people uh, students should be aware from their first year of their project, uh, career about basics of machine learning how to do practical application and hands so that's how this is very important and helpful information for our listeners and students yeah. so uh, thank you for that and sir uh, from your rich experience of it industry and now moving to academics what do you think is the best teaching approach for a course like machine learning and what are the program outcomes that are expected from a student okay uh, the one and only single outcome is industry ready students right okay. and now if you want to break that into pieces uh, there are different pieces we can break to it okay but uh, before that let me take a small step back okay uh, one thing that i really want to uh, communicate uh, to the students okay before starting with machine learning they need to have certain prerequisites to do justice right okay. to understand the subject matter well right and the fundamental thing in that regard is the concept of statistics right. and right. basic mathematics specifically in the area of linear algebra okay. okay so that is definitely recommended uh, programming, I think our students are starting to, I mean, hone up their skills in programming right from the school days. So I think that is a given. Uh, again, hand in hand with the programming comes algorithm. So they have a sense of algorithm right from their school days. So that's their point of have. One other important aspect which I think uh, students need to be focusing on is the domain. Knowing the domain is extremely important. I mean, technology is an enabler, but knowing the domain, whether you are focusing on the banking domain or healthcare or uh, something else like uh, manufacturing or retail is up to you. But try to pick up at least a few domains, basics of it. Okay, That is very important as a prerequisite. Now, as a part of the uh, course, okay, the machine learning course, what should be the focus? First and foremost focus, I think Saikat briefly touched upon, getting the fundamentals correct. 
so understanding the basic concepts should be the primarily the objective of the program so outcome expected number 1 is the basic concepts being clear okay number 2 you have to understand again which problems you want to solve using machine learning yes. which problems you should not be solving we discussed that earlier you should not run for solving each and every problem using machine learning that is a second important aspect third and basically that aspect develops from your basic knowledge itself right i mean basic knowledge itself gives you that intuition third you need to understand the al algorithm so there are many popular algorithms of machine learning like in supervised learning there are very popular algorithms like knn mapbs uh, support vector machine uh, random forest or more other algorithms right uh, like that unsupervised also there are different algorithms you have to understand the algorithms at the depth of it okay so how the algorithm actually works you need to understand that very well so just don't jump into the coding just get to learn python or r and start calling the library functions and start coding that should not be the purpose you should understand before calling an algorithm you should understand what the algorithm is doing before you call that algorithm okay that's the third thing fourth definitely you need to do hands on okay. so what tool you are using whether you are using r or python or sas or matlab that is absolutely not essential some people say that python is ruling the world everyone should grow and learn python it's not like that if you learn the concepts well and learn to implement the concept using at least one of the tools other thing other tool using exactly. other tool is just exactly. a child's play okay it's not a big deal right so these are the four things i would definitely suggest as a program outcome and for achieving this uh the teaching methodology the teaching pedagogy as we call it should also be aligned right okay. so the first and foremost thing that we as teachers should try to impart on the students is the foundational skills the basic knowledge right so right from what machine learning is what to use I and mean, which problem to solve and which problem not to solve okay then the different algorithms one by one each of them we should be teaching okay so that's the first thing again today's world students i mean they are quite uh, i mean they are quite uh, eager to learn each and everything only when they have a, there is a motivation right they want to relate okay this is a theoretical thing what is what is it related yeah, in the exactly. real world exactly. so try to i mean approach the teaching as much as possible with examples and case studies real life examples real life examples and case studies right so when you say that this is the kn and k nearest neighbor algorithm you say which practical problem can be best solved using kn okay so that is the way you should follow next okay third thing is again the theoretical sessions should be complemented with the hands on or the lab sessions okay i mean theory is definitely great but theory put into action is what is needed by the industry okay that's the third thing and at the end there needs to be a very uh, holistic mechanism or a very uh, wide uh, encompassing mechanism to evaluate how much and how good the knowledge or learning has been so the evaluation also needs to be good okay so i think i was able to address uh, yes yes definitely definitely sir yeah so we so i would like to introduce our new book on machine learning by two experts and there's another third author who's from cognizant technologies chennai who's, who could not join for this session so this book is has been developed using all the best approaches which were just discussed they contain real life cases and then uh, there are like hands on exercises using multiple examples in all machine learning languages like r and python and then cases are there so this book will be available in first week of october we have a small quick poll question here question will come just 5 seconds 
question is which of the below approach works best for teaching machine learning option 1 take more hands on based approach second add as many as case studies as on possible on actual uses of machine learning third bring industry perspective into consideration fourth all of the above so the correct answer for this is option d all of the above um so uh, there are questions we have got some questions during the session and we will try to address as many as possible and remaining will will get back to the past participants after the session okay so one question is what is the difference between machine learning data mining and data analytics uh, data science yes yeah when well, it's it's a very <laughs> tricky question i mean uh, we bump across this question often so uh, again uh, the approach of data mining and machine learning has been often pretty similar obviously there are certain uh, additional algorithms and certain uh, things you can do additionally in machine learning right so uh, that is the basic difference between data mining and machine learning data science is actually a much broader perspective it not only covers machine learning it also covers different other elements like iot okay mobility and other things so it's like a broad umbrella of things and ultimately the objective is to come up with meaningful insight okay so again it's a broad paradigm and machine learning is a part of it which helps in solving the problems okay so it is a broader term and machine learning is a part of it yeah so, so data mining we can say it's more of identifying some insights or patterns out of it and machine learning is on top of that i learning from it and predicting something of future so like we discussed so okay. it's a insight or the gold data that we create through data mining and all and machine learning will extrapolate that to see the future so application okay. it good it's good to see more and more live questions coming the next okay. question is is deep learning a type of machine learning okay. yeah actually uh, deep learning is a repackaging of the uh, old concept so i mean people who are familiar with a specific type of machine learning uh, which is definitely covered in our book also uh, it's called neural network right so in neural network we have the concept of hidden layers right so in case there are multiple hidden layers in a neural network uh, that is called deep neural network okay, okay. and when the number of hidden layers increase a certain number then we generally package it as deep learning but i mean if you really ask me deep learning and deep neural network are kind of synonymous okay thank you and one more question what type of projects can be done on machine learning at ug level on the graduate level yes okay so i think uh, saikat covered some of them some uh, internship options which can be done right. uh, for live projects actually you should be uh, i mean let me name one of the very popular websites which keep on giving uh, competitions or launching competitions uh, based on problems from the industry okay? okay the name of the website is kaggle and other than kaggle there are other websites also but kaggle is actually globally the most uh, uh, what should i say popular one correct mm, okay. so uh, if you i mean if undergraduate students at least can go through some of the projects launched or competitions launched by kaggle they will get a feel of real world problems okay that is one second thing is uh, there is a very interesting uh, concept in kaggle where all the people participating or more many of the people they share their own code bases and all okay so that also gives a different level of learning it also helps in understanding how different people are implementing machine learning the same problems solving the same problem in different ways 
and if you are implementing in different tools, using different tools, right? So that is also a very interesting perspective to have. So I mean, if you get internship opportunities, which most of the uh, big companies now offer to the students, that is excellent. If you are not getting that kind of opportunity, because sometimes there are security restrictions and other things which prevent the internship opportunities or restrict the opportunities. So even if you go through the competitions in Kaggle in a very serious way, I think that is good enough for grooming you uh, from a project experience perspective. Mm, that will be really helpful for the students. Absolutely. I can probably share one example of the internship uh, project that we normally do. Uh, very easy one. The domain specific knowledge is not so much required, but it's very rich in machine learning. Like supervised, unsupervised, both are used in that case. It is like a service request is coming on your way. It's like a new ticket. You have a vast pool of ticket which you need to categorize fast using unsupervised and see different different clusters of the tickets or service request you already have. A new service request is coming. You have to now categorize that into one of those buckets, which is again supervised. Learning. So this is a powerful internship project we give to understand do they know actually about supervised and unsupervised both and can they do it in Python and are that coding part. So uh, that is a very good example. People can use. Very relevant for uh, making students employable and industry. Exactly. Yes. That is the focus. That is the focus. Yes. That should be the focus. Yes. So, so one more question. What is the difference between data, information and knowledge in IT industry? Okay. So actually uh, there is a in statistics, there is a, a thing called uh, probability and uncertainty. So we normally write the equation like knowledge plus uncertainty equal to usable knowledge. What does it mean? That means you have some knowledge which is a past data. If you know the, and based on the past data, you are trying to forecast something of the future. Yes. So you are not sure whether the past data is actually representative of the whole gamut of your uh, study or not, but you are trying to focus that on future. You can do that relevantly if you know the uncertainty uh, about that knowledge. So, if you know that knowledge, you have the knowledge, you know the uncertainty that is related to that knowledge. You can predict the future as a using that as a usable knowledge. So that is the main focus over here. That is the main difference between having knowledge and having information. Okay. So information with uncertainty or the its property gives you knowledge. Gives knowledge. Okay. So uh, one one more question which is, I think will be the last question we'll okay. take for the okay. session. Sure. Is uh, is machine learning based on predictive analysis? So I mean, again we couldn't have the time to uh, discuss each of the elements. So I talked about the supervised and unsupervised elements of learning. Yes. And third element is reinforcement. So when we talk about supervised learning that is basically predictive learning or predictive analytics. Okay. So there we are having a type or a class of, uh, uh, I mean, that is known for the past data. And we are trying to predict the class or the type of the unknown information which is coming out. So that is the predictive analytics of the predictive learning. But when we go to unsupervised learning, that is generally called descriptive learning. There, you don't have any past data based on which you can predict, right? So that is not predictive learning. So again, in a nutshell, your learning, I mean, predictive learning is a part of part machine of learning. Part. Okay. There are other elements of machine learning also, like descriptive analytics is definitely one of them, or descriptive learning is definitely one of them. Okay. Thank you, sir. So Thank it you. is really encouraging to get some active participation from, from you all. And we could not take all the questions, but we'll try to address them after this session. So thank you to all to our experts and participants uh, for this wonderful session. And request you all to fill the survey questionnaire, which you'll just get after the session. So expert talk is an ongoing journey of learning and hope to see you soon with our new set of experts on interesting topics. Sure. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.